Hey guys, this is Brad at IOPS360. Uh, today's webinar is going to focus on the equipment side of uh, the IOPS360 platform. This will basically allow you to track anything, uh, any kind of asset inside your organization, such as uh, monitors and stretchers, down to uniforms and key cards. Uh, basically anything you want you can track and uh, there's no limit on the quantity of these things of different types. So we'll kind of show you a couple examples of where this might be useful in your organization. If we click on features and system config, and then we'll highlight over here to the uh, equipment tab. It's going to give you a little overview of what these are. The equipment types is the parent category, uh, the, the physical piece of equipment, whether that's going to be a monitor, stretcher, uh, key card, uniform, helmet, those kind of things. Those will all go into the equipment types. Um, with each of those types of equipment, you can have different attributes that you want to track, such as the date placed in service, the date it was given to an employee, uh, the cost that you bought this piece of equipment for, uh, serial number, model number, those kind of things. Uh, there's a variety of things that you can do with the attributes. The attributes can be reused. So what we can do is uh, this model number might apply to stretchers, and it also might apply to monitors. So that way you don't have to create the attributes for each piece of equipment. We'll just create those once, and then we'll go down to the third option, which is where we turn them on for that specific piece of equipment. So let's go down to the equipment types first. Inside the system, you're going to see a couple of options that are already created for you automatically. And you can create as many different kinds of you want uh, equipment types that you want to. Again, we might have a uh, key card. We might have helmets, uniforms, shirts, anything you guys want to track, you can do that. Uh, vehicles is also another common one and we can actually link that with the truck check section to port the mileage over automatically. So with the equipment the big feature here is you can create inspections so every 6,000 miles we need to do something uh, every one year we need to inspect the uniforms those kind of things uh, that's the benefit of doing all these things here. So inside the key card uh, or in the equipment types you'll notice that we've got key card here and we've got Matt listed next to it. This is going to be the person that's going to receive the support request, the email notifications, whenever a user reports a piece of equipment has been broken. Um, so click on each one of these, create as many as you like, assign the person next to it that will be in charge of that category. So if all the stretcher issues go to this person, all the uh, uniform issues go to that, that's where this will come in. Uh, once you make any changes, make sure you hit update equipment and that's going to save that and you'll get the confirmation up top. Once we've got all the equipment types uh, created inside the system, we're going to go to the attributes, which we can click on right here, or we can go back to the system config, and it's the second option there. Again, the attributes can be reused across multiple pieces of equipment. So uh, mileage is going to be pretty specific to a, a vehicle, uh, ambulance, a QRV, those kind of things. Model number might apply to stretchers and uh, helmets, hose, that kind of stuff. So you can create as many attributes as you want. You'll have a couple in there by default. Uh, when you click on these attributes, it's going to give you the option to uh, rename it up top here and also select the data type. So for anybody who's not kind of computery, uh, the base dropdown will allow you to pick a specific base uh, inside the IAPS360 platform. Uh, date's going to be your standard month, day, year uh, type setup. A decimal one place is any kind of number such as a mileage. Uh, decimal two places, of course, might be money. Uh, integer is going to be any whole number, plus or minus. We've also got string and text, and this is kind of your general type in whatever you want field. Times, units, and then users. So again, create those. Um, when you're all done, hit the update attribute. And then we'll go over to the third phase, which is where we, we put the attributes, we turn them on or off for each different kind of equipment. So we'll click assign attributes to the equipment. And in here, we, again, we've got all of our equipment types, so we'll just click on the top one. And here's all the attributes that you have created uh, on the second phase we just looked at. So for a key card, we would want to maybe track the date we placed it in service or we gave it to the individual, and maybe a serial number. Those are going to save automatically. And then we'll click on the next piece for a hose. Uh, we've got turned on coupling size, date, place, and service, length, those kind of things, serial number. And you can go through each one of these and turn these on or off as you want to. Uh, after you get some equipment inside the system, you'll probably realize that you missed a couple attributes or different pieces of equipment that you wanted to track, so you can always go back and change these uh, whenever you want. It won't hurt anything changing from one equipment type to another or turning different attributes on or off on the fly. So once we've got the configuration set up, we're going to go to Features and Equipment, and this is going to bring us to the main equipment search page.
Um, so the first tab again is the search. The next one is going to be all inspections that are inside the IOPS 360 platform for all equipment. Service records are going to be things that are broken, written up, prior work orders, those kind of things. And the last tab is my equipment. And so on the search page, when it comes up initially, it may be grouped with all kinds of equipment in here. So you can filter this down to a specific kind of equipment type. You can filter it to a specific category, uh, status, all bases, or any individual. So when we've got it assigned to not assigned to any particular user and un, no type selected and the items are grouped, you're going to notice that the majority of the table is blank and you've got a count column. So if you've got 10 vehicles, you would see vehicles 10, uh, 20 pieces of hose, three monitors, those kind of things. When you click on anything, it's going to basically change over the uh, search equipment type to stretcher or whatever you clicked on, and then it's going to ungroup it here. So now you'll see each stretcher inside your organization. So we can click on these and it's going to bring up that specific stretcher and we've got the uh, serial number up in the name of that piece of equipment. We've got a type which is what we looked at on the configuration, the equipment type there. We've got different categories that you can assign to it, create different ones. We have a color code for in service or out of service and we have an equipment color. So the status is going to be something that you set as this is in service, out of service, reserve, those kind of things and the equipment color is going to be a system generated color code. So if there is an active inspection that's coming up, then you might see yellow in this case. Uh, if it's something that's overdue, you'd see red. If you have an open service record or when something is broke, then you would see red in that case. When we keep on going down the page, you're going to see the custom attributes that we've turned on for this piece of equipment. So we've got date placed in service, model number, serial number. And then over on the right hand side, we're going to see the assignments for this piece of equipment. So a piece of hose might belong to the base. It's not on a particular apparatus. Uh, it's just sitting there as backup. That would be something that's assigned to the base. A Something that's assigned to a unit would be a stretcher, a monitor, things like that that belong with that apparatus. The Inside the scheduler or inside IOPS, there's units and trucks. Units are going to be the scheduled positions. So this might be EMS 1, um, ladder 5, that kind of stuff. The assigned truck is going to be the physical number. So today, EMS 1 is 951 truck number. Tomorrow, EMS 1 might be 953. So that's the difference between a truck and a unit. The unit is the actual vehicle identifier code uh, inside your organization versus a unit is going to be a scheduled position. And then the fourth kind of assignment is the user. And this would be something like a key card would belong to an individual or a uniform would belong to a specific person. Any equipment can be assigned to none of these or all of these. It's up to you. Um, whenever a piece of equipment is assigned to a user, then whenever they log in next time, they'll get a confirmation page noting that they've been assigned a piece of equipment. And then uh, are they accepting that equipment as they are the owner of it and it's in good working condition. So that's good in case uh, someone leaves or gets fired, you know which pieces of equipment you need to get back from them. And then we also have a notes section down in the lower part. You can put any kind of um, details, when things were issued, special logistics, those kind of things. So if you want to make any changes to this, you can hit the Edit Equipment button. It's going to bring up all your drop downs of uh, the same fields we were looking at a moment ago. And then you can save, and we've got your delete down here at the bottom. The next tab that we'll look at is the documents. This gives you a way that you can upload the purchase order, the bill of sale, um, the manual, those kind of things uh, relative to that piece of equipment. The next tab is the inspections. Here you can create any kind of inspections, such as a yearly inspection on a piece of equipment for a uniform, or you can do oil changes, those kind of things. If you create new inspection, it's going to ask you to give the inspection a title, and let's say, let's we'll call this yearly. Uh, inspection. If I could spell right. And then it's going to ask us what's the basis? How do we, when does this inspection occur? If you have any numerical based attributes, such as a uh, mileage on a vehicle, would be a good one. Then you can base it on that. Uh, otherwise, you'll always have the date attribute. So in this case, we'll say we want to do this every six months. We'll pick six as the frequency, and the inspection will be based on months. 
and then how much advance notice do you want? When is this going to turn yellow to let you know that this needs to be addressed, that it's coming up? So in this case, we'll say 30 days, and then it's going to ask you for when did we last do the, the inspection. So if we did it today on 730, this inspection is going to be due six months from today, and it's going to turn yellow 30 days ahead of that. So you can create multiple inspections on a piece of equipment. Um, you can tweak these as you need to, and then we'll hit Save Inspection. This is not going to come up with an inspection that's showing green because we just did it today. Uh, it was complied with on 730. If there's a numerical based attribute in here, such as the mileage, you'll see that number uh, in the complied with column. Uh, the current amount will also show you what the mileage is right now, and that's going to port over from the truck checkoffs automatically, or you guys can key those in. And then it's going to, the last three are going to show you how much is remaining. So we've got essentially six months left. We're showing green for the inspections, and that's 100%. The next step that we'll look at is the service records tab. And this is going to be where users can write up when a piece of equipment is broken, lost, that kind of stuff. What happened? Uh, when did it happen? What were the circumstances? Those kind of things. So if we click on service records, uh, we'll have a search table here of any prior service records for that piece of equipment. And if something's broke, all the users will have the option to find this uh, piece of equipment and they'll hit create new service record. Uh, when this comes up, this is going to give them automatically a status of red, and they can set if it's in progress, uh, waiting repairs, parts completed, that kind of stuff. Uh, but typically, as a user is doing this, something's broken. We need to get notif We need to notify the correct people, and this will stay in the new status. Uh, if that individual has already contacted you guys and the repairs have already begun, that might be something where the user would initially create this and set it to in progress, those kind of things. Uh, so the problem discovered by, discovered date, discovered time, and then uh, a prompt for the users to put in what happened, what were the circumstances, and trying to be collect a lot of information directly from them. That way the repair can be, uh, the problem can be recreated and hopefully uh, repaired on the first time. If the individual sends the piece of equipment to servicing or to a base that's designated to receive the items for you guys, uh, they can go ahead and mark that that phase was done, that uh, it was sent to service. And then the where's that equipment at right now? So we took it off the unit and we laid it on the right-hand side of the bay, that kind of stuff. So the user can hit uh, update and the service record's been created and then it's going to automatically email the individual that is in charge of that piece of equipment, that type of equipment. When the repairs have begun, you'll uh, come in here and you'll update the status of the uh, service record. And you'll notice that some additional fields come up at the bottom here. Reference servicing vendor, when did it return from service, uh, date, time, that kind of stuff. You can also create as many different vendors as you want in here. So if you click the little plus, that'll give you the options to create additional vendors. The good thing about this is if you do go ahead and create the vendors in here, you can put the contact person, address, phone number, fax numbers, websites, those kind of things uh, in here. And so they'll be there for you next time as well, so you don't have to look up that information. Uh, when the equipment is returned from the vendor, you can put the name of the person who's physically doing the work at that vendor. That way, if you guys do have an issue, you know, and you can go back and talk to the specific individual that's working on it that day. So it's not, so you don't have to start from fresh every single time. And then any kind of findings, documentation, that kind of stuff of the results of the service can be included here. The last three are going to be related specifically to the resolution as to what happened to the piece of equipment. Was it for parts use only? Was it discarded, returned to service? And then the labor cost and labor hours. Uh, once these are filled out, uh, it's going to prompt you for different validation things depending on if it's a new service record status or it's completed. Uh, you'll notice that the reds pop up whenever it's uh, in the middle phases wanting you to have some additional information in here. Uh, with the new, you can save it pretty quickly and you'll notice the resolution set, uh, fields automatically hid. Uh, won't stay, eh, of course, won't stay in upright locked position. All right, and we're going to put this on the right side of the bay. And then we'll hit update. All right, so this is going to go ahead and send the email out to the individual who's going to receive the uh, stretcher service records. You can always go back and print this, uh, tape it to the piece of equipment, that kind of stuff. You can forward it uh, through email to an additional person. That might be the vendor directly if you'd like to. And then you'll have your synopsis of what was happening, uh, the status, any uh, resolution steps that have been done. 
And then the important thing here is you can also attach any kind of documents and images with this. So if the ambulance gets backed into at the uh, under the canopy of the ER, that kind of stuff, you guys could take a picture, put that in here. Uh, if the equipment is defective and you guys can capture it on your phone of what's going on, uh, screenshot, that kind of stuff, these can be added in here as well. And then again, once all these are completed, uh, you, then you'll have your full history of all the service records for that piece of equipment, along with the aggregate uh, labor hours and cost to repair that. So since we created that service record, you know the equipment color went from green to red now. Again, that'll happen with any open service records or with any inspections uh, that are due at that point. The editing history is going to show you um, any kind of edits to this piece of equipment, the date time those occurred, what the previous value was, uh, the changes, those kind of things. And then the truck check history, if this piece of equipment is linked to a vehicle and that vehicle is involved in, the, in a truck check off, then it will basically allow you to look at the truck check forms that involve this piece of equipment so you can see all the, let's say it's a glucometer, then you'll have a list of all the daily check offs that were done for that glucometer. So a lot of good information in that one. Um, when you go back to the main page and you click on inspections, uh, this is next to the equipment search, not inside a specific piece of equipment, but just on the main equipment. This will show you all of the inspections across the entire organization, each piece of equipment and every single inspection. So this can be a little big, but what this allows you to do is basically come in here and you can see every equipment, red, yellow, green, very simple, uh, and know the status of all the inspections vehicles, stretchers, hose, that kind of stuff in one fail swoop. If you click on the service records, uh, it's going to do the exact same thing, but it's going to do it in regards to the service records. So you can see there's two open service records that are still in the new status. These would be things that we uh, have received the emails for and we'd click on those, go into them and uh, put those in progress and notify the correct vendors. We've got a lot of different search and filtering up here up, up top. So if you wanted to look for a specific equipment type or specific vendor, you can do that. If you're looking at one piece of equipment, its entire service history, that'd be something that we would go into the equipment search, locate that specific piece of equipment, and then click on the service records under that specific piece of equipment. And then the last tab out here is going to be my equipment. Any equipment that's assigned to an individual, when they come to this page, then they're going to have my equipment. And this would probably be like uniforms and key cards, uh, badges, those kind of things would be listed under this page. So the user can always quickly check the status of their equipment, uh, their, their helmet, that kind of stuff. They'll know when a, uh, night vision goggles need to have an inspection, those kind of things. Anything that's assigned directly to that user. So. Feel free to play around with the equipment section. If you guys have any questions about anything, give any of us a call. Um, it can be a little daunting initially setting up that equipment type and those attributes, but at the end of the day, kind of just feel out the fields that you want to track, knowing that the more fields you add, much more details, but also it's a lot more data entry too. So we're able to mass create some equipment types and attributes and inspections for you guys. So if you want to have, you know, a hundred pairs of pants, a hundred pairs of shirts uh, added into the system, we can do a loop and kind of help automate uh, a lot of that data entry point, or we can import from an Excel, those kind of things to make this a little easier. So thank you much.